Hi folks, so today I am going to be taking a look at a mobile phone that is brought out by the E Foundation. This is the Fairphone 3, which is uh, kindly on loan to me from the E Foundation. And effectively, uh, the reason I wanted to do this video was because I was actually quite fond of how the E Foundation approach uh, free and open source uh, mobile phone operating systems. Now, as you all know, we don't have too much uh, of a choice when it comes to free and open source mobile phone operating systems. Uh, in fact, we don't have much of a way of, of getting outside of the Google Apple duopoly, but we do have some options. We have the Pine Phone, we have the Librem 5, and of course, we have the E Foundation's EOS. And I like the E Foundation approach because to me it's always seemed a little bit more pragmatic a little bit more practical what they do is they take existing um, you know phones that are, are produced on the production line like the fair phone like the you know various Samsung galaxies and they just flash their free and open source uh, operating system onto the phone and then sell it on um, so that way it makes it accessible to people who are perhaps slightly less tech savvy or perhaps people who aren't interested in the technical aspect of of mobile phone operating systems but still want to support free and open source software and it gives them an avenue um, to, to go down which is actually quite affordable now the um, the the fair phone here uh, on the uh, the e-solutions which is the e-foundations shop is 449.90 euros so it's the best part of 500 quid uh, but they do have cheaper models like for example the galaxy s7 uh, refurbished with 32 gigabyte storage uh, with one year warranty for 249 uh, or well, basically 250 euros. So, you know, you're not breaking the bank and you're not necessarily having to deal with the overhead of creating, um, you know, basically the uh, the hardware for the operating system. Uh, and that, to me, m sort of is, is very much in the spirit of open source solutions, uh, partly because it does allow these sort of smallish foundations, certainly small when you compare them to Google, when you compare them to Apple, to actually exist uh, without having to worry too much about market share, as long as they can survive, you know, using this rather pragmatic method, then, you know, it, it provides us with the choice that we desire, which I think is quite good. So, all of that uh, in mind, um, I did manage to have uh, a good good long time to take a look at this. Now, because this is a device that's on loan and for, do, uh, for data security reasons, uh, I didn't use it as my primary uh, mobile device, but I did have a look through all the apps, all the app stores, and I've got to say, if you want the long short of it, this is every bit as good as the Android device that I'm currently using. It does everything exactly as I, um, as I, as I would like it. The app store itself, now, it, it, so many people had, had asked me, does this come with the F-Droid store? And what is interesting about it is that it comes with the, um, uh, it comes with its own uh, app store. And the app store itself doesn't just have free and open source apps. It has apps from, uh, you know, the same kind of apps that you would see in the Google Play Store, really. So, for example, uh, even though it is a free and open source uh, operating system, uh, you can, uh, for example, put in... The WhatsApp Messenger, and then you could just install the WhatsApp Messenger if that's something that you uh, that you needed to use. And a lot of people I know are on WhatsApp, and it might, for many people, be the necessary exception that um, that they might have to make here and there. But what is good about the uh, the App Store, the, the 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 App Store that comes with the iPhone, is um, that it gives you the it gives you the license. So uh, when it says license unknown for the WhatsApp, that's obviously because it's proprietary. So what you can do is you can just put in the F Droid Store, uh, and then it gives you the ability to to download the F Droid Store. And as you can see at the bottom there, it has the uh, the GNU public license. Uh, which is the, obviously the license of the store itself, uh, and then you can just install it. So it is it is interesting that this is an um, uh, an app store that actually allows you to install other app stores because, of course, it is against Google and I assume Apple's uh, terms of service as well that you're not allowed to actually include app stores in their app store because I suppose it's uh, you know competitive practice and all that kind of business but uh, the long short of it is you can do anything with the EOS that you can do with Android and I assume with iOS but to be honest I've never really used an iOS phone I have no desire to do so and considering how I've seen Apple treat the third-party developers that try and get apps onto the platform I have no interest in dealing with that, that, that ecosystem you know free and open source stuff aside the, the Apple ecosystem is just something that every time, the more I learn about it, and then the more I use about it, I have to use desktop Macs uh, for work, and I bump into them from time to time. The more I use them, the more I'm exposed to them, the more I dislike them, like I just can't stand them. 
um, and, and, and part of it is, is Apple's practices. Uh, part of it is just the way that, that they just can't really do much. You know, anyway, that's, that's a rant for another video. But uh, the long short of it is this is a degoogled version of Android and it's, um, it does everything that Android does. And that's if, if that's fundamentally, if that's what you're, you're looking for, you're looking for a phone that can do everything that Android can do, but that isn't Google, then you've got it here. Now, there are a few things uh, that I'd like you to make aware of you, to make aware of you, to make you aware of. First of all, the camera on the Fairphone, just as a side note, really good. So I've got some pictures that I'm uh, showing you right here. You probably can't see them in the full resolution, but yeah, I love how the colors are brought out in it. Um, the apps are basically, they do the same job as the Google apps. Uh, and many people who do use a Google phone, they don't bother switching out the apps, but if you want to switch out the apps, you can switch out the apps. You can customize it any way you want. The, um, the, the software that I'm using to actually record the phone itself, that just came bundled on the phone. It came part of the recorder. So the recorder in my experience has more features than the one, the standard one that comes with Android. Um, the weather app is fine. One thing you should know is that the notes app. Uh, it's a, so you take notes on the notes app, um, but you, in order to use it, you either have to log in with an e account or you have to presumably like self host something to do it. Um, and some people I know who have used the, uh, this operating system were a little bit and, you know, like annoyed that basically they have to use this particular notes app. It's not as I'm an, uh, it doesn't seem to be removable and, uh, yeah, and, and, and whilst it's just easy as pie to just install another uh, note-taking app on top of it, um, it just seems to be a little bit uh, baked into the, the sort of the EOS ecosystem, uh, which is something obviously, you, you know, many end users kind of want the freedom to opt out of if possible. Uh, but again, you know, for note-taking apps, I just use a text editor and then sync it with SyncThing. Um, I've installed MindTest on there. MindTest works great, but that's more of a hardware issue more over anything else. But the Fairphone itself, really nice piece of hardware. Really did enjoy using it. Um, but honestly, you know, there's not too much to say about it. There's not too much to say about it. Um, I can say a lot about the Fairphone. The Fairphone, um, uh, in terms of a piece of hardware itself, really nice. The idea behind the Fairphone is that it's a mobile phone that uh, where the parts are sourced as ethically as possible. So I don't necessarily know how ethical that is, but it seems like they've gone out of their way to make it as ethical as possible. But also with the Fairphone, uh, it came with a screwdriver and you can see all the modules on the back here. So if you wanted to upgrade the RAM or the CPU or the memory, all the, uh, the RAM is the memory, you know, all the various bits and pieces for it, then you can do so and you're expected, to, you know, that you can switch out parts yourself without having too much of a technical, um, than necessary for technical background. There is also, I notice, a fingerprint scanner here, but I'm not a particularly big fan of fingerprint scanners, so I haven't given it uh, too much um, time. But yeah, uh, basically, if you're just looking for de-Googled Android, because in my personal experience, Android's a pretty good operating system, all things considered. Uh, you've got a much more open app store, and quite frankly, the app store is really the thing that sets this truly apart from, from Google. Uh, but yeah, uh, you, can, you can even, even, not just WhatsApp, you can even put can put Facebook on there like uh, so you can see it there and even even heaven forbid uh, YouTube so you can even use like the Google Apps on this uh, on this device because I suppose for many people when it comes to the Google Android operating system it's not necessarily that they dislike Google it's that they might dis they might dislike the lock-in they might dislike the idea that Google is the only option uh, when people in certain circumstances might want to opt out uh, or might want to at least have the option of opting out. And I can certainly understand that. Um, uh, all things considered, can't praise this phone more highly, highly enough. Like it just did everything that I, you know, that I, I expect of an Android operating system and it, it, it just comes through. It comes through easily. Zero issues, zero issues. Like the, that's, that's, all I can say about it, like if you're just looking for a good phone. Oh, there is one thing that I should mention, actually. Now, there is one piece of software on this phone that is not free and open source, and that is the SatNav. So how has EOS done in terms of competing with Google Maps? Because as far as I'm concerned, Google Maps is a market leader in this regard. And as Andrew Yang says, no one wants to use the second best SatNav equipment. So Fundamentally, this is something that they kind of needed to get right. I've used the OpenStreetMaps uh, app and it really just isn't that good. Like it kind of gets you there much of the time, but 
not always easily, not always without it being janky. And if this is this phone needs to appeal to as broad a base as possible, you need something that just works and just works as well as Google Maps. And that's kind of where EOS has put on its only piece of non-free and open source software. It's a piece of software called Magic Earth, um, which does use OpenStreetMaps' uh, data, but it just uses it within the app. Now, they did actually release a statement here, which I will just uh, move across. Uh, and it says here, uh, right, so the Maps application. Regarding the Maps application, it's the only application that is not yet open source in E. Uh, we have tested many Maps applications, and the only app that can be compared to the common well-known Maps application is Magic Earth. We have discussed with the publishers of this application, and while they have not decided to go open source, they have provided us documentation about the privacy behavior of this application. My personal feeling is that if we show enough adoption for this application, it will eventually turn open source. So the privacy statement from Magic Earth publisher General Magic. Privacy means freedom. That's why we do not collect or share personal information. The applied rules for sending and storing data are the following. Only transmit necessary, so minimal information from the user to the server. Where possible, anonymize data already on the phone before sending. Uh, if pseudonymous information is needed, for example, for debugging, only keep it on the server pseudonymously for a, for an for and as short a period as possible. Uh, do not create user profiles. Do not share personal information. In the used ecosystem, no external service APIs are used to prevent data leakage. For details, here is the privacy policy. So that's fundamentally it. Uh, Take you or leave it as you wish. But to be honest, I kind of understand that. Um, like I said, I've used the OpenStreetMaps uh, app before. And whilst if you are a complete free and open source hardline advocate, I can understand why you might persevere with it. But if you are someone who just wants to get away from Google um, and you want something a little bit more freedom respecting, you know, I can understand the pragmatic argument for this. This is about as close as you can get. and uh, I kind of understand the decision. I kind of under the, understand the decision. And, um, you know, it's getting away from the, the, the Google Maps and it is making use of, of open street data. So that's uh, that's my take on it. But of course, you guys, you know, you got to make up your own mind on this. And um, But yeah, all things considered, uh, this phone just works as well as Android, uh, but without Google. Uh, I quite enjoy testing it out. Um, if I was in the market for a phone, I'd probably give these guys a serious look. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of chap that just runs the phone into the ground. So when it comes to getting a new phone, I'm certainly going to give the E Foundation a look. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I wish I had more interesting stuff to say about this, but this just kind of, you know, a lot of the apps, they're kind of mimicking the Android apps just without Google. And it works. It's a good way to do things. Uh, the, the way that they use hardware, it's a good way to use the hardware. That way they don't have the overheads for having to generate their own hardware. Like the Librem 5, my God, you know, they've, they've given themselves an absolute mountain to climb when it comes to developing that kind of hardware hardware when at the end of the day something like the free phone the fair phone or even just an existing something like a samsung galaxy you know it would do the job um as well if 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 the bottom line is free and open source software that you want to support and if i'm completely honest when it comes to you know privacy respecting hardware and software the fact of the matter is you're walking around all day with a gps a microphone and a camera in your pocket you know like how how privacy you know like how privacy respecting can you be like um you know, like it, it, it's, uh, and I absolutely get the convenience of having a smartphone. That's one of the reasons I picked it up. Like for for my work, I can't beat it. It's like having a laptop in your pocket. It really is. But um, but yeah, like it's it's there is a there is a privacy overhead. There's a privacy cost when it comes to this. So, uh, and it's up for each of us to work out what we can do. Uh, in terms of, 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 you know, minimizing the harm, minimizing the damage, minimizing our reliance on, you know, the, the, the big corporations and, um, and just, you know, muddling through the best we can. And, you know, I don't blame anyone for any of the decisions they make as long as they put some thought into it. That's really where I stand on it, you know. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining me. It's a pleasure as always. And until next time, uh, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo. Uh, oh, guys, and in case you were wondering, uh, this is what the microphone on the Fairphone 3 sounds like, which is, in my opinion, pretty good. Certainly better than my uh, my current phone, but...
Uh, just thought I'd throw that in for you.